Hi there, my name is Matt Osgood. This is the third video in a series looking at using a Presona Studio Live Series 3 desk in the studio. The first video in the series covered the basics of getting sound through the desk. The second video looked at getting started with monitor mixes. And in this video, we're going to look at how to apply some effects to sweeten those monitor mixes and also how to use Presonus remote control apps, QMix, Universal Control Surface and Studio One Remote to save engineers loads of time and to give performers complete control over what they hear. Let's get started. So this is where we've got to so far in our user bank of faders in this series. So channel one here is controlling both sides of a stereo pair of Presonus PM2 mics. Channel 2 is my PX1 large diaphragm mic. My click track is here and PC playback is coming in here. Now I'm about to record some acoustic piano using the PM2s and I want to set up a bit of reverb on the track. It's a very chilled, spacious, acoustic track. So I want to create some of that vibe in my monitor mix to help me give an appropriate performance. Now down here you've got the four FX mix select buttons and if you hit those in turn it brings up the corresponding effect on the touchscreen. FX A and B both default to the digital XL reverb, C and D are both set to the stereo delay but there's actually four different reverb processors and three delay options along with a chorus and a flanger so do experiment with all of those. I'm going to go back to FX A and select the PAE 16 digital reverb and set it to a small hall. Now, I am monitoring mix one and two, but if I want to hear this reverb in my headphones, I need to bring the fader up in the main mix. I hit the main mix button and then bring up the fader, which is controlling channels one and two up to unity. The reason that I have to do this is because the reverb send is post fade from the main mix. So if this fader is all the way down, I won't hear any reverb. So set that to unity. I then go to my FX A mix and this is now setting the amount of reverb send. Bring that up to about minus 10. Remember, because this is stereo linked, this is effectively the send for channels one and two. And then go back to mix one and two hit the AUX inputs button, which brings up my effects returns over here, and I'm going to bring up effects return A up to Unity. Note though, because the reverb send is post fader from the main mix, now if I have the channel fader up in mix one and two, if I bring this channel fader down, the reverberant sound will stay at the same level. It won't decrease correspondingly. If I brought this channel fader down to nothing, I would still get the reverberant sound coming through. Fortunately, however, Presonus have created a way of keeping the dry and wet sounds in balance with their QMix app. So let's have a look at that now. This is the super basic and cheap Wi-Fi router, which I've connected into the control socket on the back of the desk. Note though, on the back of the router, I'm using a regular LAN socket. I'm not using this WAN socket because the WAN socket is firewalled internally in the router and it doesn't work for this purpose. And that took me a little while to figure out. This is QMix. Now this is a free app from Presonus for Android and iOS. Now I've connected to the desk's Wi-Fi network just the same as I connect to any Wi-Fi network. And when I open QMix, there's an icon for the desk so I connect to that and then it comes up with a message saying no permissions set for this device. Now this is very helpful for live use. You can control how much access different musicians have over monitor mixes depending on their level of technical knowledge or incompetence. Uh, for now I want permission to tweak all of the auxes. So what I need to do is hit the UC net button on the desk, then permissions then here's my phone listed and I set my permission level to all auxes. Now, if you were working with someone who you just couldn't trust not to mess things up, you would set their permission to wheel of me only. And that would mean they could turn themselves up and down and that is it. We obviously need more flexibility than that though. QMix is brilliantly simple. Here's my level, uh, here's the band level, 
and in between is the wheel of me. Now, if I turn that up, there's more of me, which is what everyone wants, right? But at the moment, the app doesn't know who me is. So if I just swipe right and scroll to the top and select the stereo PM2 channel, and then if I scroll down and also select effects return A, these are now grouped. So if I turn the level of me up or down, both the dry and wet levels will move together. So you can now see in the background, that's my effects return channel moving. And my dry signal is moving correspondingly as well. Now, another really cool part of the design of Qmix is that if I rotate my phone to landscape, it gives me a full bank of faders, so I can tweak the mix in detail here. There's an icon as well here, which prevents the phone switching from one view to the other, so I can either have it in full view or the wheel of me view, and now it's locked, so no matter how I tilt the phone, it stays where it is. Uh, Qmix has got a whole load of other cool features. It's got the ability to group faders together into four subgroups, so you can quickly control the level of, say, all your drums or your guitars. But for now, that's enough. Let's have a look at the UC Surface and Studio One remote apps and then actually get down to doing some recording. So as I said, the first instrument that I'm going to record for this song is some acoustic piano. I've got my Presonus PM2s set up as a stereo pair here. Um, they are plugged into an NSB 168 digital stage box. There's an Ethernet cable running through into the desk uh, next door. Um, I've got some headphones plugged into my Presonus HP2 headphone amp. And I've also got an iPad running Universal Control Surface and my phone is now running Studio One Remote. Um, these two apps will help me control my monitor mix and also control the recording software. So let's have a look at these two now. Universal Control Surface is another free Presonus app for iOS and Android, but whereas Qmix is really streamlined so musicians can simply adjust their monitors, UC Surface is a completely comprehensive control system that enables me to do anything with the desk from anywhere within Wi-Fi range. Now this is obviously a great tool to have for live use when you can remotely tweak the mix from different places around a venue, but it's also fantastic even in a small studio setting like mine, where you're using more than one space. So I'm going to use it now to set an initial level on the piano mics. First of all, I need to select the input as network. And then I need to turn phantom power on for both sides. And then adjust the gain. Now I can also switch to meter view if I hit the settings icon and then select meter. There's just a whole screen of meters there and this would be awesome if I was recording a whole band at once. I wanted to check everyone's levels simultaneously. For now though, the regular mixer view is sufficient. And the final Presonus app we're looking at in this video is Studio One Remote. Now my desktop PC is connected into the same Wi-Fi network as well. So I have my PC, my Android phone, my iPad and the desk all talking to each other and I'm ready to record. So I've got a complete set of transport controls here on my phone. I can arm tracks as I like, I can create new tracks if I want and so on. And on the iPad, I can continue tweaking my monitor mix if needed. And all of this saves so much time in terms of not having to go back and forth between my computer and my instrument I can just get on and record. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to record the piano part, and then in the next video, we'll have some other musicians recording more of the song, also using Qmix and UC Surface. And I'll demonstrate how to use the power of the Fat Channel to enhance your monitor mixes further. See you in the next video.